Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a new, I guess they're boilerplate videos since this source code is available online. It is an example application with Firebase authentication. I have draw, I integrated a drawer and then I've integrated a tab inside of the drawer to show how you can stack the, um, basically, basically show you can integrate the navigation stacks inside of each other. So we have our login screen that you see. Then when you log in, you get a drawer component. The home page of the drawer component is the tab. You have the two tabs, but then you can also navigate to specific drawers. So let me quickly show you the app. Then we'll walk through some of the code. The code's already written. We'll just walk through the code. Then you can access the boilerplate code in my, in my GitHub repo. It's here at Firebase Explorer Router app. There'll be a link below. And then I have a fully documented README that explains the app, the project structure, everything that you need to do to get it up and running. We talk about some additional configuration that you need to do inside of Metro to get native wind working. Actually, I forgot to mention that this is all styled with native wind. We talk about the Firebase auth setup. And uh, that's it. So hopefully this will be helpful to you. But like I said, let's take a look at the app. Please make sure you like and subscribe. So we'll just log in. So you can see we've logged in. We've now switched to our home page and we have our tabs. We have home and then kind of this is just the regular, just another tab to have there. What's happened is that we are in a drawer and this tab stack is inside the drawer for home. So I can switch to profile. You can see the tab's gone. We're now in the profile page. We're pulling some user information in, but we can switch back to home and then we have our normal tab behavior. And you can log out and we come back. I've also added the sign up so you can create accounts. And this is basically what the app does. Like I said, it's a portal plate that gets you started with Firebase and Expo authentication. So let's kind of just walk you some highlights on what's happening in the application. There's kind of a new flow on how authentication is, well, basically not authentication, but locking down pages are, are being implemented, I guess, and recommended through the Expo Router documentation because this, this is what I followed for this. Um, I did also include all the links to everything that I'm using here at the bottom. So we have the Expo documentation, Firebase doc, Expo Router, and Native Wind. My, my thoughts on Native Wind, I do a fair bit of web development. I'm already comfortable with Tailwind. It's just a lot easier for me to use it inside of uh, mobile apps because it's something that I'm comfortable with. You know, let's start with the common stuff that we'll do that on different. So if, ever, if you've ever done this before and you followed the documentation, the pattern that they're using is uh, creating a context and then accessing that through, through the provider. So the context that, they, that we're using, that I'm using, is pretty much based on the context that is um, referenced in the documentation. You can thank GitHub for the additional documentation since it's free now. To, I mean, not since it's free, since it's easy to kind of run Copilot for documentation. I'm trying to thoroughly document all my sample code for you so that it's clear what's going on. As you can see, as you scroll to here, actually kind of more comments than there is real code, but I just think it's helpful for the beginner when they're going through it. But as I said, we have our context that's set up here. Inside our context, we have sign up, we have sign in, we have sign up, we have sign out. We have our user object, and then we let the user know if a if it's loading the user or not. Here's how we set up the context. Here's our use session hook that we're using to get access to the values inside of the context. And then here's the provider that we're going to wrap around the whole application. We have our state variables here. We have our use effects that happens when the app first starts, so we can see if we have a user, get access to the user, and we set it in our session context. And then here's the actual code to handle the sign in, handle the sign up, handle sign out. And then here's our auth provider, which will be wrapped. And let's kind of quickly hop down to see where that wrapping is. And if we go, we want to go back to our root layout. I am in my app directory. I said sign in. Sometimes with all this nesting, it's kind of easy to get lost. All right, so yes, here's my layout. I'll explain the other app app there. So here's my layout. And you can see I've imported my session at the top and then kind of explaining once again, overly documenting. Here's our session provider wrapping everything. 
this is your basic application layout here and the session wrappers wrapping the whole thing so we can get access to it. So that's how, that's the context, that's how you wrap it. And then let's quickly look at the Firebase code. We have our Firebase configuration. This is something I have not figured out how to make this warning go away, but the application still runs fine. We have to do some little extra stuff here because we're using the Firebase web API inside of React Native. I just find it easier for the work that I'm doing. I'm not doing anything magical that I cannot solve with using a web API. I'm much more comfortable with the web API. And in my opinion, a web API is just a lot easier to integrate into your application. So we initialize an application, and then this is kind of the, the extra magic stuff that you need so that the application can maintain its state through refreshes. So if I log in and I restart the app, this allows it to kind of rehydrate the state and it knows that you were logged in already. So that's what's happening right here with this Git React Native Persistent and it's kind of saving it and loading it in. There, and now since we talk, talked about this, it's probably also a good time to mention it. We had to add this code here to get Tailwind to work, right? And it's actually covered in, let's pop over here. If you, I mean, that's native wind. If you hop over to native wind and you look at uh, getting started, you have the config, you have your bet, your Babel, I guess, presets that you need to set to make it work. Then you also need to modify your metro config. I also have this documented inside the readme for the application, but I'm just referencing it here so you know where I got it from. But we, we needed to add a little bit of extra stuff in here to address, it's just what I saw in a document, eh, documentation to get the Firebase subpath exports to work appropriately. And that's how we're getting, where did it go? This React native persistent thing loaded in here. So that covers Firebase config. I have my Firebase service. It's kind of just where I've consolidated all the Firebase specific calls. So. Once again, this is just documentation. You have the interface. So we have our get current user call. We do this by the auth on state change, and that will give us back our current user. We have our login function. We're doing sign in with email and password credentials. And then we have our logout, straightforward. And then we have our register. This creates a user. And then also, since we're passing in a username, it's setting the profile information to, of display name to the username it's passed in. That's Firebase service, blah, blah, blah. We covered this service, we covered config. Now let's talk about how this sign-in, this new sign-in approach works. So basically what's happening is that the magic is down inside of this layout. So this, remember, this is a grouping. It's just a grouping for the files that are in there. But it's all considered to be, for lack of a better word, at the same level as this sign in, sign up, sign out, layout, right? So what happens is that when the application starts up, it hits our layout, and then our layout looks for its index. And if we open up our app, it hits its layout first. So when you come into app, it's going to hit its layout. And if we open up its layout, we can see this is how we're managing access to the routes inside of app because it has to hit this layout. When it comes into this layout, like the documentation says, the app layout serves as a root authentication wrapper for the main app routes. It ensures protected routes are only accessible to authenticated users, loading states are handled appropriately, and unauthenticated users are redirected to sign in. It wraps all routes within the app directory, but not my auth routes. As you can see, my auth routes are up here at the top level. I could group them, but they're up here at the top level, so they're not going to be impacted by this layout because this layout is only for what's inside this app group. So what happens is when it comes here for, for this user session, it gets the use session from the context and it determines if it's still loading. If it's still loading, it renders the text. If it's not loading, it drops down. If there's not a user, it's going to redirect to my sign-in page. If there is a user, it's going to fall through and render the index page. And then the index page just says redirect to my app drawer that tabs. The first page inside of my drawer, which happens to be the tabs. And so that's what this redirect does. And so that's 
basically how it works. So if I try to access any of these pages inside of this app directory, it's going to go through this layout first, and this layout is going to check for a user, and if it doesn't have a user, it's going to redirect them to sign in. That's really how this works. So that's how we covered the login. Let's take a look at the sign up. This is basic create a page, capture information, call the login function. So this is the create account. We just have a, we have our input for the name, email, password. And then on sign up, as you can see on the on change, we're setting these values. So we're setting the state values here. And then on the register, we just take the values and we're calling the call that got passed in through our use session hook. Once again, because it's documented, you can see all the parameters and context sign up. See on our use session, we just have the sign up and that's what's being called. Let's quickly look at sign in. Sign in, same basic layout. We have our state variables, it's capturing values. We have our email, we have our password. Click the button, handle sign in. Handle sign in. That's interesting. This looks like it's a little excessive. Yeah, I don't need, this could probably be collapsed. Um, I handle login, it calls the sign in function. If successful, it returns, and then I do a router replace to kind of get you back to where you want to be in the application. All right, what else did I miss here? We could briefly talk about the the navigation stack and how it all works. Let me go back and kind of sign in again. Okay, so you can see now we're on our home page. And then like I said, our home page carrot has the two tabs, and then our profile page is another drawer. So now let's look at how that code works. So, and then, because if I, let's look at my layout here for my drawer. So here's my drawer layout, and it has two drawers in it. The top drawer, which is the tabs drawer, and then my profile page. This is my profile page. It grabs a user session, gets a display name, and just displays some information about the user, their display name, email account, the last time they signed in, and their creation time. Once again, pulling this from the session, and then what you can see here for the first screen, we just provide the name of tabs. And so this will get us the tab stack, which is what you see now here. The tab stack is laid out as the first page for home. So now if we go over to the tabs and we look at the tabs layout, this is where we have our tabs layout. And so you can see we have our screen options, all other stuff set, but then you, the important part is that you have your initial tab, which is your index page, and then your explore page, which is the second tab. And then the index, you can see, just kind of lays out this information, grabs the sign out and the user from the session, has the logout call to call logout, computes the display name, and then you can see we're using Tailwind in here to kind of make the page look kind of pretty. And we have our handle logout button, which calls the logout. Our explorer is just kind of empty. I just wanted to have two tabs. The profile page, we already kind of walked through with the profile page. It kind of shows the information. So I'm going to just wrap this and say this should be hopefully a helpful. These are just leftovers from the original sample app that I used to generate this. Did I cover that in the readme? If I didn't, I will add it to the readme. But... Uh, no, I didn't talk about how I set up the app. I just talked about cloning it. But basically, I set it up by just using the create the um, create React Native app as a um, blank app, and then I started adding everything else to it. A couple of challenges that I ran into, and did I mention them here? I will add them to the README also. But be very careful. Because after installation, what will happen is you will get a version of React Native Drawer version 7, 7 something, and it simply will not work. Like the, it, it seems like this React Native Drawer, if you go to version 7, is it in sync with this Expo version? 
and is it in sync with this Expo router version? If there's something that's off, you'll get this bizarre error. Just roll back to 6.7.2 and life will be much better. I, I will definitely leave, it, leave a note for that because that was a gotcha. I burned a lot of hours trying to figure out why this did not work. And it came down to the, the versions were just off. It's, it's just really as simple as that. The versions were off and it wasn't working. The same the problem that I ran into with Expo Router. If you follow the documentation and you use the latest version of Expo Router, you'll just get caught in this infinite loop when you attempt to update the page. There's a couple of other a couple of other people who ran into the same issue. It's documented inside of GitHub repo. I solved my problem by just rolling back. That's kind of some, some of the challenge you have when you're living life on a bleeding edge. But I'm at about 18 minutes now, and so I'm going to wrap this video. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. Once again, please definitely make sure you check out the source code. Questions, problems, issues about the source code, just open an issue, and I, I will get back to you. Hopefully you found this helpful. For the people who made it this far, I am actually have the exact same application built using AppWrite. And so I'll create a video of that walking through AppWrite and how I integrated AppWrite's React Native SDK to a mobile app to demonstrate log, um, login. Once again, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time. Bye.